Hey everyone, it's the PB Brooke Valentine, Fight TV's favorite ass. And I love you, wrestling. You, you love wrestling? Of wrestling. Welcome to Women on Wednesday. Yes, yes, yes. We are back again. I got Nicole from Down for the Count. You know, she's part of We Love Wrestling, too. And today we have someone who we talked to last fall. But as uh, you may know, Fight TV's favorite ass, the Queen Bee, Brooke Valentine. How are you doing today? I'm good. We're staying hydrated. You love to see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, got to stay hydrated. Uh. Well, let's start there then, you know, since you've been here before, <laughs> stay hydrated. You got a lot of people thirsty out here when, when you uh showing your, your ass, if I can say that. Um, how did you become Vice TV's favorite ass? So, uh, you know, on uh, GCW's Fight Forever, uh, I was, Ziggy Heim had me in her uh, finishing maneuver. And why can't I think of the name? Because it's the best name for a finish that I've ever heard in oh my life. Ziggy. I'm so sorry, Ziggy. I love you so much. It, the name escapes me. But the camera zoomed in right on my app. Like, it was just <laughs> all out there. There were, like, three other cameras, but no one that I was just bent right over in front of. Uh, and the clip went viral. Kind of viral. Like, for me, what everything else that I've done, it went for me. <laughs> for me and I was like, fuck it, fuck loves my ITV's favorite it, it definitely did go viral um I remember uh I think you tweeted somebody a MMA uh person had retweeted it or something you like oh look they're looking at my ass on fight TV and I was like Brooke is real hype about them looking at her ass right now. <laughs> as she should <laughs> as a girl as a woman herself it's cool to see. I never thought that I was um, attractive in that sense. So it's kind of nice to be like, you know what? Fuck yeah. I'm hot as hell. And y'all are thirsty for it. Oh, okay. You know, like it's fun. <laughs> it's good. Brooke, what you mean? You didn't think you was hot like that? You know, <laughs> compare it's me. A girl, it's a girl thing sometimes. And we compare ourselves and it's the same thing. And you're just like, eh. It's like, especially when you're looking at your friends and they're like, oh, she's so pretty. And then you look at yourself and you're like, damn, what am I doing? <laughs> I just thought I was always going to be the funny one, you know? But now I'm funny and sexy. I've been funny and sexy, but now I know it. Period. Oh. <laughs> well, well, live it up, Brooke. I love to see it. I love to see it. So last time we talked to you, you know, you was like, I don't know why people not booking me. I don't know what's going on. You know, my schedule's clear. Then we get into 2021, you know. I happen to be at Mania. Happen to be at a show called For the Culture. And I, I'm looking. And I, I saw it announced, you know, uh, Thick and Juicy 2.0. Uh, I, I love the tag team myself, but how do you feel about the tag team? You know, um, I obviously have a lot of respect for Willow. Mm -hmm. um, she is amazing. Everything she does is amazing. Um, and being able to be in the ring with her uh, is, is like the best learning experience ever. Um, there's already so many things that I've learned just from that match that I've been able to attribute going forward that I constantly am reminding myself of just from Willow alone, let alone who else I was in the ring with. like. Fire and flavor. You know, if y'all if y'all haven't watched that, y'all need to go watch that on Fight TV. That match was fun. It was very fun. It was a really good match. Thank you. I loved it. I was there front row. I was so hyped. I, of course you were, Terry. You know, you know it. <laughs> I, I went to talk to Brooke at the show, but you know, I was just like, man, I'm I'm just in fan mode. So I you know, just enjoying it. I was nowhere to be found after my match. <laughs> Towards the end, I was able to go out there and enjoy the show, but I was dying after. It was bad. So you, you were in a tag team match also that same weekend, which when I saw them announce you guys as a tag team, I was like, hmm, it would be tight to see them in a match. Um, I think it was on Hot Girl shit. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the name of it. Then you ended up facing Willow. Hi, Willow. Let me just say hi to Willow. Um, another one of the sponsored athletes for this coming weekend, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, how do you was were those your only two shows? Many a week? No, you also was on the Zawa show. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, that, yeah, for Zawa, um, that match was a lot of fun. Also on IWTV, if you want to watch it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Wrestling Willow has a dream of mine for as long as I've been aware of who she is, which is basically my entire career. Um, yeah, I mean, you just look at her and she just is like everything that you aspire to be in this business. Like everybody loves her. I haven't heard anybody say one bad thing about her ever. And if anyone ever did, you'd be like, okay, that's a lie doesn't make sense um and she is just so good at what she does she's so fucking good um so being able to be in the ring with her again to learn from her in that aspect a dream come true absolutely great stuff so a dream come well it's not a dream come true. <laughs> losing wasn't <laughs> <laughs> right um that's not how i saw it going but so let, let's talk about something that we didn't see how it was going to go there um, before I kick it over to the code. This past weekend, you were in Dallas. Yes. And uh, I saw, yeah, I don't know her, forget it. I saw the post, you know, when they was talking about this show that was going on. And um, it was this, this woman rapping. I'm going to be <laughs> respectful to you. Both might be disrespectful. I'm going to be respectful. It was this woman rapping, and you made a video. Um, mm -hmm. People haven't seen the video. You didn't understand why they were promoting her when you had a match with Blair Onyx. I didn't understand either, um, unless she was the reason, unless she was sponsoring y'all match or something. But um, you caused a little bit of uproar online, and everybody in, well, not everybody, her little goons, as we can call them, in Dallas was coming at you. Um <laughs> How did that turn out in Dallas for you? Uh, it, well, I lost. Okay, I lost. I to take money? No, not to take money. What <laughs> <laughs> have she got in there in the ring? Like, something. And then yeah, Blair. I yeah, I. It's my fault. I had Blair up. I was about to beat her ass, and then I looking at me and I was like hey money come up and then she walks up to the ring taking her earrings off I'm like okay she about to so I drop I drop Blair I was like okay get off me bitch I mean Blair and uh she gets in the ring yeah she didn't do anything but she sure did something after Blair started twerking like in, on top of me oh Rudolph? She, she uh, uh, no comment about that. Uh, her twerking and everything. Um, go go check out Brooke on Fight TV, IWTV, all that. Nicole, get up in this because I'm gonna come <laughs> back. I got I got some more to talk to Brooke about. So come on in this. So a little bit. Obviously, you were talking about your. I think you, even though you said semi-viral, I think it was completely viral because I remember <laughs> it when it happened. And I was like, dang. And it went on for a couple of days. So, and we kind of talked about, obviously, we touched base a little bit about how, you know, you kind of consider yourself, you know, the funny girl. So how has it been, not only that, but this journey throughout wrestling, but being more comfortable in your skin and comfortable with your your body and your sexuality and how or how have you came about that or obviously is this still a road that you're still traveling down right now i mean i feel like the destination just always gets further and further i don't think there ever really is <laughs> the end <laughs> to this journey. <laughs> however it's definitely like a day-by-day -day thing um but i feel like for so long like i had it in my head that being a rep of like a female wrestler that is also like a, a I don't want to say sexual icon because that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But like, I guess in my, I didn't see that I can as a serious um, actor that is so, like has, has 
is, is sexy. I mean, I have only fans. Like I, I post about very overtly sexual things sometimes. <laughs> Make me a bad wrestler either. Um, I think coming to terms with that is like the hardest thing for me because the patriarchy has built it into our head that if you are, um, you know, show cleavage or if you dress a little more scantily clad than the other, that you are not seen as smart. You're not seen as powerful. You're going to be seen as promiscuous and as dumb and whatever. Um, and I think the more that women just do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> so more yes. and just kind of like reverse that. And like, also just because I post their traps online, doesn't mean y'all can come up to me at shows and talk to me. Doesn't mean I want to see your little shit in my DMs. Doesn't mean I want to see none of that. I want to get that out there because people seem to mistake. I got a question being a male fan. So I, I love women and everything, you know what I'm saying? And I see when some of the women wrestlers post this stuff. Um, but being a male fan, I back myself away from actually commenting on that. Uh, what advice would you give to, like, the male fan when they see you posting things like this to, like, say something but also be respectful? Because I see a lot of the guys and I'm like, oh, that's a perv dude, so I'm not going to even comment on it. Or if I do comment on it, I'm just saying something like, okay, I see you. But, you know, I am a man, and I see it. I'm like, yo, <laughs> you know. But what, what advice would you give to the men about that? If you think it might, if you're like, oh, I hope they don't think I'm creepy, it's probably creepy. Yes. Uh, but, like, saying, like, okay, I see you. Like, I would say that to my girlfriends. I'd say that to my guy friends. Like, that's a normal compliment or saying, okay, you're like, you look really good in that color. Like that's a compliment that is complimenting that person, but it's not like, oh, tits, you know? Like <laughs> you can compliment somebody and have it not even be about the body. It's so easy, but I don't know. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I just try to stay away from it. Cause I'm like, if you go out and be like, oh damn, that ass is so fat. I mean, how, com how would you compliment your mother? Or your your auntie, your grand granny, you know, like. Yeah. So guys, I feel it's okay if you just say, "Okay, I see you," or "Oh, that that's what we doing right now." Okay, you know, just leave it there. Don't don't go into that other stuff that some of y'all be doing. Like, stop doing that on our videos too. It's like the. the it's the, weird. The, the it's fuck. Yeah, and like the the drooling. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to ask the co go ahead. No, you're good. So just piggybacking off of that, and again, how you were saying, um, sometimes the guys or some, and this isn't all wrestling fans because I don't want to generalize, like this have a problem with boundaries for some reason. And this is just like across wrestling in general. I feel like a lot of wrestlers, ha a lot of wrestling fans have really weird boundaries and or don't understand boundaries when it comes to wrestlers because they feel as though just because you're buying shirts or going to the shows and um, helping promote that you have a certain agency to these people. And sorry about the cat. <laughs> and then you don't. And then they don't. And it's just like this weird. And I compare it to like trying to like treat. And this is just like even just male wrestler, everyone in general, like they kind of treat, treat it as like prostitution in some ways. Like, oh, I'm paying this much. So I own you. So how do you navigate that and how and how well or how or more boundaries do you think you should set when it comes to things like that? Yeah, um, I think, first of all, you need to be 100 percent with yourself. What are you comfortable with doing? And once you have those boundaries, for so much easier to place them for others. And then just like I know at first, like oh, but they want my shirt. Like, no, I don't want them to be my. They can't respect my personal boundaries. Right. I don't want them to support me. Um, I think it's like the same way with standing up for like civil rights or whatever. You know, like the stuff that's been going on lately. All, everything that's been happening, it's like people, some I've seen people saying, "Oh, be quiet! You don't know." Like, no, if I can't speak about these things that directly affect my life, 
I don't want to work for forever, you know, because I can't do it. Facts. You can build a giant fan base that is 100% supportive of your personal boundaries if you just set up boundaries and keep str- keep them strong. I, I'm really bad at it, so like I'm giving all this <laughs> advice. It's hard. Cause I want everyone to have like a good experience just with wrestling in general, but also like I am only human. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that. So just to segue a little bit. So it's been, I think almost it Well, it, it'll be basically a year since the last time we spoke. Mm-hmm. Um, so how, so what, so again, like, so how do you feel about everything that you've done in 2021? Cause I feel like it's just been such a whirlwind for you and I feel like you've been everywhere. So how have you been like maintaining your focus while still trying to achieve and do more um i am just i i i'm a big fan um and because of that i can get overwhelmed because i think so far ahead Mm -hmm. um so lately i've just been trying to focus on it one week at a time i can have a little bit of like this backspace in my brain focus on okay but in a couple weeks we have this but forefront is just What's this week? What do I need to do to get ready for this week? Um, because, like, yeah, otherwise my anxiety was going crazy for a while there. And, like, I just shut down and I don't do anything. And I don't go to the gym, eat right. And, <laughs> uh, so I get even more than not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So, uh, yeah, I, I can just one week at a time. I'm really trying to reflect and, um, on the week four, enjoy it because I never in a million years thought I'd be flying anywhere. Um, and look at me now. Yes. I love it. And again, and I'm going to kick it back over to Terry. But again, thank you again for taking the time to speak with us. And you just been killing it lately. And don't let anyone mess up your stride or try to come in your lane. Just kick that hoe off the lane. Period. They come over it. <laughs> yeah, period. All that. I don't know if I can say period. I'll be stopping myself from saying it, but I say it here. I think um, <laughs> you can say whatever you want. So before we get into Black Wrestlers Matters, um, it is Pride Month. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm usually on Twitter and everything, you know, watching on the wrestlers who we spotlighted, seeing things going on. So a while ago, you did announce that you told your parents that you are a bot. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that feel to get, I, I don't know if it was like a monkey off your back, but to get that out there and just let them know that? Um, it was, uh, I just kind of like blurted it out. <laughs> we were just sitting there and my sister was like talking about, uh, she, she, we, my sister and I play Sims, like we're huge Sims players. I play it all the time. It's my favorite game. <laughs> yeah, okay. And she was telling me about the color swatch of something. And it the colors the the eye flag. And so I was like, oh, period. And I was like, what? And I was like, I'm bisexual. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I was like, it's not a big deal. I don't want it to be a big thing. But this is who I am. Yeah. And that was that. <laughs> oh. Well, sorry to interrupt. I don't interrupt you, Terry. So speaking of that, so how does it feel to be openly bi within the with wrestling and being in wrestling? So I feel like there's a lot of strides that needs to be made with how the business handles LGBT and LGBTQ plus members of the of the industry. And so what kind of stride or how far, so how proud of you of how far we've come with that as an industry or how much more do you think that could be done? Also being by, being by and a person of color. So that's like even more to take on as well. I, um, I mean, it sucks that we're still having first, you know, mm-hmm. it's, I, was, I can't remember who I was talking about this with the other day, but it's like at this point we shouldn't be like proud of these things. It should just be like a, okay, what are we doing after this? So like, are we, is this yeah. just first and that's that? Or is this actually continuation and development of the, um, of who you're going to have on your roster? 
um, because a lot, a lot of, like I, I have some sort of, I, I have a privilege because I've been in a straight um, presenting relationship. You know, I wasn't really a vocal about my sexuality. I really just found that realized that a couple or came to truth, came to honest a little bit with myself recently. Um, so I have a lot of privilege in that to where I don't deal with a lot of issues that some of my um, friends have had, you know, because this is just who they are, it's who they've been. Um, and like, it, it's a lot of their calendars are really busy right now, but then not after, not the month after. Um, so it's just kind of like it's still a tokenization. Um, it's, I feel like, when these promotions, you know, in the middle of nowhere, they don't typically have LGBTQ plus um, talent. They book them in typically sexual storylines or, you know, certain stereotypical things where it's like, why can't you the actual performer and book them for what they do, not what you think they should do because they're gay or because they're trans or because they're pansexual or asexual. Like what, you know, um, I think it's still just booking to check a box as opposed to booking because they're fucking good. I 100% agree with that. And sorry to interrupt you, Terry. I just <laughs> was wanting to know a little bit more about that. Oh, you good. You know, um, so knowing a little bit more about something. Rick, I want to know a little bit more about this. So... <sighs> Sadness comes up on me. Last year, Black Wrestlers Matters, you know, I took a picture with you and Faye. I'll put the picture right there so y'all can see it while you're watching this, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, and I was like, have you two ever faced? And y'all was like, no, no. So, you know, thought we was going to get that face off this year. And then in about March, Faye Jackson announced her uh, retirement. You know, the 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 post had went up, had the We Love Wrestling on there. I was so hyped. I made a whole hype video for it. Um, I don't know, Faye, you might come back. But, Brooke, how do you feel about Faye actually retiring and that match not going down? I just want to be happy. Um, so if she's happy, I'm happy for her. Um, I, I keep crying whenever I talk about this. Um, I love her so much and she means so much to me and I hope she knows that and I hope that but um, that match I mean, just the fact that it was going to happen it, it's fine for me you know um, I just I hope that she's happy I hope she comes back but I just hope that she's okay and that she's happy and that she stays at least somewhat involved in the business because we are all so much better with her in it. Try to stop you from crying. I do have to say this though. Um, what Brooke is doing right now, that's real emotion because after Mania, she's like, where I'm at right now, none of this does does not happen without Faye Jackson. So Faye, thank you for looking out for Brooke and you know bringing her up to that spot and, and actually letting her uh take on the mantle with your tag team, you know. Uh, <laughs> Just being a fan of it, you know what I'm saying? When it happened, I was like, there's no better person than Brooke. So, you know, me as a fan seeing it, I was happy that it was able to happen and you accompany to them them to the ring. Um, but what we are here for, you know, yeah. since that match is not happening, Black Wrestlers Matters too, going down this Saturday. The Saturday. <laughs> If you're not facing Faye, they put you in a fatal four-way. You know, it could. I mean, you're not going for the championship, but I, I heard it's the number one contenders match. Yes. Uh, you, Devon Monroe, Mike Outlaw, and Camaro Jackson. Come on. Camaro. He, is his name Heel Camaro? No, that's just his uh, his handle. Yeah. Camaro Jackson, okay. That's his hand, so I know who he was, so I'm not <laughs> tripping. No disrespect, Camaro. <laughs> Saturday. Um, Black Wrestlers Matters put out a tweet like, who do y'all think will be the number one contender? I got offended by that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, 
because I was like, the fuck what you mean? I mean, <laughs> obviously. But um, people been talking like, you not going to win this match. How do you feel, bro? I, you know what? I love going in as the underdog. No one think about me. Forget about me. I'm <laughs> there. I'm not there. As long as they stop talking about me. You know? I feel that. But <laughs> you got some stiff competition in this match. I do. God. Mike is no punk. Uh, Devon Monroe. If y'all don't know who Devon Monroe is, I mean, just just look on Fight TV and IWTV. You can see him, and Hill Camaro. That's a big boy. Yeah. Um, uh, I trained a little bit with Camaro and um, Outlaw, so this will be fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've known them for a while. I've known mm-hmm. them all for a while too. Actually, I've known them all basically since I've started wrestling. So. I asked you, I asked JDS this on Monday. If you haven't watched that or listened to it, go listen to that. So, number one contender, you win the number one t- contendership, you win the championship. I don't know how this title is going to be defended, if it can be defended, you know, away from Black Wrestlers Matters and everything. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like you may have, because we don't know, you have to wait a year to Black Wrestlers Matter 3 to get a title opportunity? Or let's say you win the title before Black Wrestlers Matter 3, would you take this title out and defend it in different companies? You know, no boundaries. That's what we like to talk about. I'm so so confused. Okay. Were you asking me? So let's say you so you go you the number one contender, right? Yeah. Yes, love. Say we don't know if you have to wait to Black Wrestlers Matter 3 for your number one contendership. Or if you'll get it beforehand. But let's just say it happens before that. And you win the title. Which at some point you're going to win the title. We're just going to put that in the air. Would you defend that championship. Outside of the Black Wrestlers Matters 2. Black Wrestlers Matter promotion. Like anywhere in any company. I mean if I had the chance to. I would love to. Yeah. I think it's a prestigious bell. I think that's what better way to like really show that I deserve it than to defend everywhere I can. Mm-hmm. Defend everywhere you can. If they're ready, let them try. <laughs> Whole squad ready. Uh, let them try. But the championship match, JDS versus frontman Ja. I'll put you on the spot. Who you got winning this? They're both my boys. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> got to pick one. I listen, 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 listen. There is no doubt about it that JDX is a insane physical specimen of a person. Like it's insane. It makes no sense, but we just accept it because it's right <laughs> for our eyes. Um, but Jaws got those mind games, and he's so adaptable. You know, okay, so the other day I said Jaws, so I think I got to say JDS. Oh, so you flipping flopping out here? Yeah, because oh, I'm man. <laughs> so they can't be bad at me. Oh, man. So she said JDX on, I, I guess it goes because we had JDX on the first one. <laughs> so, you know, she picked JDX. I'm, what she, like, yeah, JDX. Dude is insane. Like when I see him, I think he's a star. He should be out there. Everybody's seen him. And then and Ja, these promos that he's been cutting. Whew, that boy is he doing some work and he's showing up at all these other companies. I really don't know who's gonna win. You there's like there's what it's such a toss up. Literally, there's no there's no um like clear cut advantage for either of them because the other one has to respond for it. Facts. If you are not up on this, you need to go to blackwrestlersmatters.com. $15 for the live stream, Saturday, 7 p.m. If you in Des Moines, Iowa, you know what I'm saying? Buy you a ticket. They still got a couple of a few tickets. I'm not gonna say a couple. They got a few tickets, just just a few. Um, be in the building, meet and greet five thirty fifteen dollars on blackwrestlers.bigcartel.com. Um, you get to meet Brooke, 
and all the other people yeah. um, that will be on the show. Um, I'm, I'm just excited for this to go down because, you know, it's always here. If you watch the spotlights, we always talk about it. I still got the the wristband they gave, what they call an armband. Yeah, we call it an armband. <laughs> so, Brooke, I, I got to ask you, because last time you was here, and you're kind of doing it this time, too. Uh, the outfit you had on reminded me a little Lisa Bonet. Yes. Uh, so, you know, being you a theater kid and everything, mm -hmm. have you been trying to work that more into 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 your wrestling persona? Because I, I, I've seen you do more things. You know, you said you, growing up, you played a natural villain, mm -hmm. natural heel. Um, you know, have you, have you been working more of that into your into your stilo yes you know i will say like going over to the east coast was so inspiring um i love my midwest wrestling um it's my foundation you know but it's so um when i went over to, to the east coast everyone was so artistic in how they presented their work but it was still hard hitting and it was still the same stuff that i was trained with but just like the way that they told their stories was so i like you're drawn into it and so ever since then i've just been okay i have this background why am i not using this you no know, like tricking willow and everybody that i you know broke my knee or whatever like i didn't you know freaking acting pulled it right up right there you know um it's yeah it's a lot of fun it makes it even more um exciting especially when i get new matchups uh, from that background, it's a it's a lot of different matchups. Uh, I hear that I want to see one matchup I do want to talk about that I talked to a person on the spotlight. Um, you versus the woe. You know when you call yourself Fight TV's favorite ass, and she's the weapon of ass destruction. Yes. I asked her about it. And she says she's seen what you do. She like what you're doing, but she would love to, you know, have a matchup with you to show people that it's more than just the ass that both of y'all have that y'all can actually put on a match. Yes, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Sign up. I'll I'll pay for this. I will pay to get my ass beaten by the weapon of ass destruction, please. You don't think you'll beat her, Brooke? Don't be coming on here talking about getting yeah. and everything, bro. Don't don't put us out like that. I'm told people that she like. Well, I am. I'm not pussing out. Okay. I want this. Please beat me up. Mm, okay. Me. Got the love Brooks attitude, yo. Um, I'm a, I, yeah, I got to ask it. So, Brooke, you know, last time we asked you if you had some people that you wanted to face. I don't know if your list has stayed the same or if it's changed, but I'm going to ask you again. Do you have three wrestlers right now in your mind that you want to face? Hmm. Golly, golly, Trisha Dora. Like, oh my God. She's so amazing. Every time I watch her work. Go ahead. Um, I think a little message to somebody. <laughs> um, I don't know. See, now that you, every time, every time I get asked these questions, I forget everything that wrestles. Um, well, obviously the world, like, duh. <laughs> Call me, please. Um, who wrestles? Who doesn't uh, wrestle? Yeah, that's the main <laughs> question. <laughs> I would love to get, and I'm going to say it again, I'd love for Swole to be my ass. I would love that. Big Swole. Big Swole. I would love, love for that. Shout I love it. Big Swole. I love to see that match. <laughs> Christian Dora, the Woe, and Big. I mean, hell, that's that's not three bad choices right there. Those are, I, I, I'm that that list excites me. I just I just came up with it, but that's a good list. I think that's an amazing list. All right, um, you, the person watching, you know who I'm talking to because you watch all these and then you send me DMs, so call her. Um, 
Did, did, did we ask last time or did I start doing this after you? Did I ask you Rock or Stone Cold? Oh, you asked me, but I don't remember what I answered. I remember what you answered. I probably I wanted to see if you remember. So let's see which one you picked today. Who you got? I probably answered The Rock. Who you picking today? The Rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, you good. Yeah, you said The Rock last time. <laughs> the rock. You switch it up, you got to find out. <laughs> oh. Oh man, I'm just so excited. Like, Brooke, let me just say this. Let me put you over before we have you put yourself over. Since learning about you and then seeing you live as Elo Pro, because you know it's all about me seeing a person live myself to like make me a real fan. And then seeing what you did at Mania Weekend. I was at For the Culture. People was telling me about uh the hot girl shit show and the Zawa show, cause uh Somebody left our sh- one of the shows we were sponsoring and went there. Um, they said you did a great job. So just seeing your progression, because last time talking to you, I just remember you was like, I don't know why people not hitting me up. I'm trying to take care of my leg, and I'm I'm just chilling. I got open dates. But now, you know, as Faye Jackson used to say, you booked and busy. Yeah. Um, booked yeah. and busy. It's weird. It's nice. Yeah, I, I love to see it. I, I think your progression is going to keep going. Um, I don't have my hat here. It's a list that's coming out this week. If y'all watching this Wednesday, the list going to come out Saturday. But then after that list, well, I'll say it. Me and Black Wrestling, Black Wrestling put together a list of 50. After they put together their list, they came to me and asked me for seven people who I think are on the brink. Um, I gave them seven, but I had more names. Um, I'm not going to tell y'all that Brooke was on that list, but I'm going to tell y'all she was a name that was discussed um, because I think she's on the brink. Just more people need to book her. Um, Any shows that we help sponsor, hit Brooke up. Get her out there. Please. (laughs) Yes, please. She'll tear that crowd apart. Um, Nicole, before I have Brooke put herself over, you got anything else here? No, I just want to say again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, I cannot go to Black Wrestlers Matter 2, so I will be um, watching it in between stuff on my phone um, at work. But again, I'm so excited for for you. And again, like just to pair it a little bit off, uh, Terry said, I think you're on the brink. And I think... 20, especially once 2022 starts rolling around, I think a lot of people are going to be talking about you. (laughs) That's so crazy to even ability, but thank you so much, both of you. I'm glad that uh, Nicole, you just said something before we go into the put you over self moment, being on the brink and everything. Brooke, I love what you're doing at uh, WrestleMax in St. Louis. I, if I don't say, I had to say that. Because I'm glad she said that because that's been on my head. But I love what you're doing. I, we got people out there in St. Louis, uh, KTR podcast. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, this Brooke girl, she she's really good. So, you know what I'm saying? They just started putting the shows on YouTube. If you haven't watched that, go on there, check Brooke out. You'll see her. She come out there. She talking some stuff, too. And I love to see it from Brooke. You know what I'm saying? We love when Brooke goes off. Something about this brings it out. Hey, but Brooke, it's that time. You came here last time. You got to stay hydrated, too. But this is called the Put Yourself Over. <laughs> you got T-shirts. We want you to tell them your social media. If you got a YouTube page, anything that people can support you, we <laughs> just want you to go ahead and put yourself over. All right. Well, you can find me uh, at Queen B. Brooke B. Oh, wait. This, this is <laughs> Queen B. Brooke B. on every social media platform. And also Cash App and PayPal, uh, and as well as OnlyFans. Queen B, Brooke B, every, everything. Yeah. I don't really go on Twitch, so. I can't either. I can't get into Twitch at all whatsoever. Hey, wait a minute. I'm trying to remember the Twitch name. It was on. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know? We won't we won't talk about the Twitch name. Uh <laughs> did you just give your Cash App and PayPal to the people too? Yeah. Yeah. Gear is expensive. Absolutely. 
Send her a cash app and a PayPal. She gave it to y'all. Um, PayPal Queen B Brooklyn. So, be, be, Brooke, so it, is your name just Brooke D or do you still do the Brooke Valentine? Brooke Valentine. That was just too long, you know. And Queen B Brooke B just sounds nice. Okay, so we took the Valentine off. Well, I still use Valentine. Oh, okay. But from the you. Paypal, it's just too long. So oh, for your cash. Yeah, I feel it. PayPal is Queen Book B. So <laughs> send her like five dollars and hashtag we love wrestling so she know it came from us. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think she said she got her OnlyFans. Yeah. Um, same handle. I think it's the same handle. Same handle. I, I remember seeing a picture a while ago. She said uh cake by the ocean or something. Um <laughs> And that's what really like had me laugh. And I think I got that picture autograph somewhere. Yeah. I'm so bad with autographs. I don't. It's with my autograph somewhere, but I don't get autographs. But I will be having autographs this Saturday at Black Wrestlers Matter. I'm trying to print out the uh, the talent po- sponsor poster that they gave us because I want Brooke to sign it. I want to put it on the wall um, with Willow and Culture Inc. Stay woke. Um. Brooke, you don't got any t-shirts out here? Listen, I have I've been signed for a while, okay, but there's a specific kind of shirt that I want it to be on, and it I just have to put a little more of an investment in first. But it's it's coming. It's the design has been made. It's ready. Okay. So, but I want it to be good. I want it to be really good quality merch. So I'm taking my time with it when people come on here i just throw out ideas so this just <laughs> popped in my head maybe like a b with your face on it you know what i'm saying um say queen b or something like that i don't know you you have to work that out but i it just popped in my head i was like that'd be a cool shirt but when her shirts get up please buy one i get one i always buy one shirt even though i never wear them and we might give it out to somebody you know a little giveaway or something yeah um Brooke, do you have any other shows coming up besides Black Wrestling Man? Because you are booked and busy out here. Yeah, next weekend I have, um, well, after this coming weekend, I have Black Girl Magic uh, over in New Jersey. Brooke, you you in Black Girl Magic, Brooke? Yeah, I'm wrestling Willow. I did see that, and I kind of, okay. I <laughs> saw that, and I kind of like, I said I saw this match before, and I kind of just put it out of my head. But yes, Black Girl Magic. M A G I K. Um, Tay was just talking with, um, some, she just talked with somebody about it, but that is a stacked card. Yeah. Trip yeah. Trip Door versus Jazz also. Um, make sure you watch that if you can watch that. It's happening in New Jersey. What, what else, bro? Black Girl Magic. Yeah. Uh, I need to, dang. I need to. The next week, I'm JJ Gibbs in Iowa. In Iowa again. Mm. Yeah, for, uh, Iowa's popping for wrestling right now. Yeah, you know, I think we're kind of about to do a little something, something here. It's kind of nice. Stop it. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Iowa has me and JJ Garrett and so much like <laughs> me and JJ Garrett, that's it. No, we have so much like un like seen talent here, just at like my school. Um, it's insane. Like really Iowa wrestling needs more eyes because they're good they're really good it is really wait crazy. jj garrett are you talking about uh thought steiner yeah thought steiner <laughs> hey that's my dude i mess with jj garrett <laughs> <laughs> i know he was from iowa though yeah. um, but shout out to jj garrett we we coming to talk to you but it's all about brooke right now and black wrestlers matters too number one contender coming up if she does not get number one contender we will riot but it'll happen. It'll it happen and we'll be good. I so I'll just sneak on in, I guess. All right. <laughs> Facts. Uh, again, blackwrestlersmatters.com. $15 Saturday, 7, uh, 7 o'clock um, Central Time. So 8 o'clock Eastern Time, which a lot of y'all watch. Please, it's a stack card, nine match, well, ten matches, because we announced one the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and hey, 
I, I, I'm just happy to have this combo with Brooke because, you know, I'm thinking about the last combo and where she at now and everything that she's doing and what should be next. Woo! Brooke, you're going a long way. Um, if you're watching this in the morning, because, you know, we don't, we have no boundaries and we, Brooke will actually be live on Twitch with uh, Val Pancakes. Um, hi, Val. I apologize when I saw you at the collective. We didn't talk, but you had me take a picture, and then I took a picture of myself. Um, <laughs> and you got me in your phone. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, if nothing else, Brooke, thank you for giving us this time. Nicole, right. down for the count. Thank you for coming on. Um, Brooke, can't wait to see you on Saturday. Um, it's going to be a great show. I know you're going to put on for the fans. She's going to have, look. Fight TV's favorite ass is going to be on BlackWrestlersMatters.com. Yes. Do you realize what that is? The ass is crossing over to different platforms. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to... Let me stop. <laughs> I got all rages. But I'm Terry your Trady, and like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. It's too sweet for a couple. <laughs>